It is estimated that 100 billion people have died since the beginning of humanity. Around 153,000 people died on the day we were all born. Eve was dying. Bronnie Ware in her book talks about the five top regrets of the dying. None of those regrets were about money. They weren't about work. They weren't about promotions, fame or followers. This is what they were about. Number one, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Number three, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. And number five, I wish that I'd let myself be happier. We die with regrets and wishes, a few hits but mostly misses. And I've heard Les Brown say that a graveyard is the wealthiest place in the world because that is where we can find all the dreams that were never lived, the books that were never written, the companies that were never found, the songs that were never composed, the words that never made sound all the hopes that were never fulfilled, the idea that was never launched, the movie that was never produced, the trip that was never taken, the product that was never used. Which means our minds are the biggest graveyards for dead ideas, dead experiences, and dead memories that never happened, that never lived, that were never fully given birth all because someone was scared of starting. Actually, scratch that, we're not scared of starting, we're scared of being seen starting. No one wants to be seen starting at zero. No one wants to be seen starting at the bottom. No one wants to be seen starting with nothing. See, no matter what we do or don't do, we will always be judged. If we just hang about, people will say that we're not proactive and we're not productive. If we talk about our big visions and start getting active, People will say we're too greedy or we're overworking. In all of our lives, we will face judgment either way. And that is why we need to live a life true to ourselves, not what others expect of us. See, people will always tell us to follow the rules, live inside the boundaries and follow the norms. And that is why we don't need to work hard for others' priorities, but work for our own. See, we will always be told we're weak to say how we feel, that revealing your truth is too vulnerable or open. But that is why we must express our feelings. And see, there will always be disagreements and there will always be distance and there will always be arguments and there will always be a number of reasons for disconnections. But we should stay in touch with those we love anyway. See, we will always be told to be more serious and focused, but we have to let ourselves be happier. We have to let ourselves laugh and let go. And as Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, we'll be more disappointed by the things we didn't do than the things we did do. We will regret who we didn't forgive. We will regret the people we didn't tell our feelings to. We will regret that we didn't give our time to the people we love and will regret that we didn't start. And even though you think Eve has all these regrets and these are all her wishes flashing before her eyes, they're not. They're her memories. They're her experiences. They're her reality. See, she didn't have an illness. She didn't have a bad health situation. She didn't have a bad health condition. She didn't have any bad news. She valued life because she knew one day that she would die. And because the thing is, it's just a fact. Death never fails. Marcus Aurelius once said, let each thing you would do, say or intend be like that of a dying person. Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. 
let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time, said Seneca. Eve lived as if she was going to die, and so she could die having truly lived. Because the truth is, we're always dying. So why not live like we already know it?